Welcome back. You're watching a Young Turk special. Launched in 2013, the Next Big Idea contest has definitely established its credibility in identifying high-tech, high-potential companies at an early stage. Its first winner, Citrus Pay, got acquired by NASPERS back PayU this year, and its winner in 2014, Conotor, was acquired by Freshdesk earlier this year. It's now time to catch up with the other two winners from 2016. Cloudrino is a cloud infrastructure management tool and you help clients manage their servers. Can you de-jargonize what it really does? Sure, sure. So we are doing to cloud what Microsoft did to DOS. We had taken the ugly looking terminal and converted it into a beautiful looking interface, right? You remember DOS, the black screen where you had to yeah. type in commands? You don't have to do that anymore. You just come to our platform, a beautiful interface, you can manage it all by yourself. Alright, uh, Tarusha, can you take me through the verticals of the business? Right, so uh, Cloudrino is uh, primarily a self-service platform, but uh, you can use Cloudrino no IO, which is uh, the cloud infrastructure management layer on any server. So we are completely agnostic to uh, platform, hardware, or the OS that you are running on your server. Yeah. So that is a one vertical. We are working on a Cloudino desktop. That would mean that you know you never have to really upgrade your hardware. We'll provide uh, GPU processors, etc., mm -hmm. with an inbuilt capacity on your existing hardware. So uh, that is uh, another that we are working on. And the infrastructure bit is there, but our primary uh, product is Cloudino IO, which is uh, for infrastructure management. All right. So Cloudino, I believe, is sector agnostic. Can you take me? through the revenue model that you've devised for yourself? Absolutely. So being a self-service platform, majority of our subscription base come uh, usually from uh, the users only. We don't have to reach out to different industries. Uh, the model works between $5 to $200 per month. It's a monthly recurring model. You've been here uh, in Toronto for a week now. And take me through the various programs and various partnerships that you've built here. And right now we have four, uh, four nodes uh, all over the world. Two are in India. One in is, uh, is in Asheville and one okay. is in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. We want to set up uh, another node here, uh, right here in Canada, hopefully in Toronto mm -hmm. or in the suburbs. So we are in talks with various data centers to do that. Today there are over 300 million surveillance cameras. True. All of them record things, but they don't really understand. True. So we are uh, bringing intelligence so that the cameras can, can themselves become intelligent. Our surveillance cameras only record footage and if something happens then we go back and see the recording. So how is your software different? What our software can do is real time, as things are happening, immediately the software can recognize, oh, it will basically look for various anomalies in video, like some unexpected human action. Most of theft related is about humans, what action they do. Any unexpected action, for example, an ATM, people come by, put their card, that is all normal action. But if people are like bending down, looking at something and trying to break, yeah. that is different. Or if somebody is beaten down and they have fallen down an ATM, that is different. So those are actions we can understand. Our software would understand and immediately raise an alert. You're also looking at another vertical that is retail and you have another product offering for it. Take me through that. Retail customers are more interested in what are the good customers doing? Like, are, where are the women shopping? Where are the men? Like, what products are they more interested True. in? How much time are they spending, right? And then provide analytics. When you combine thousands of stores, many hours, then they get very interesting analytics and this products are interesting, that is interesting. True. Compared True. to e-commerce companies, they know on the web page how much time you spend. So retailers don't know that. So they can provide that information. I have with me Matt Sanders, President Rice and Futures and Zone Startups. Matt, thank you so much for joining us here. Now, you were involved in the selection process of these six startups. What made you bet big on them? What was the selection criteria? Got quite a few applications, which is great. Every year, we look for really strong entrepreneurs that have uh, some you know, experience in the space that they're building solutions in. Uh, obviously, got some traction. They're in market. They've already you know, generated revenue and have some customers yeah. because our programs are all focused on helping companies with uh, customer acquisition. 
So when they're coming to Toronto, we're helping them connect to the market, introducing them to potential customers, and helping them sell. The Next Big Idea contest has soft landed 17 startups from India in Toronto. What is the idea behind the contest? Having them come here and get connected to the banks or the telcos or whatever uh, sector they're looking to get plugged into. Uh, so it's helpful for them to come in with warm leads and help them uh, get deals with businesses. So it's, we're effectively acting as a business development arm, but also helping them with their marketing strategy, helping them with all facets of their business, and potentially raising money as well. We've connected them to lots of VCs. The Next Big Idea contest is in its fourth year now, and you've dealt with so many Indian startups. So what, are, what difference do you see in the entrepreneurial ecosystem versus the ecosystem here in Toronto? Well, Canada is a very small country compared to India. Um, you know, last year in India, there were over 100 million bank accounts open. There's only a little over 35 million people in Canada. The technology and infrastructure is a little further ahead of what I would say India has. Uh, and some of the banks and telcos or insurance companies or retailers, uh, you know, they're, they've used some of these technologies before. They're maybe a little more open uh, to testing and trying some of this stuff. Um, and obviously from a revenue side, you know, getting into the North American market, there's, you know, over 350 million people in the U.S., 35 million in Canada. So it's a huge market uh, for these companies to be able to sell into. But on the flip side, we now have a lot of Canadian companies that we've gone through our programs here that are now interested in getting plugged into the Indian market, which is great. We've just launched a new program called Gateway 91 in India to take foreign technology companies and help them launch in the Indian market. Uh, so the Canadian government has, has funded us to bring five fintech companies uh, to India early next year and help them get set up, which will be exciting. Our startups are all geared up to pitch in front of a room full of VCs. Take a look. So our product essentially addresses all of this. Our idea is to go to all these sources that exist in the universe, put it on a very simple dashboard and show it to the end investor. How does that actually cluster together form what I could use as a hedge manager as a predictor versus a backwards looking? We are essentially in the space of financial analytics by virtue of which we essentially target all the hedge fund, the financial institutes, the banks, the brokerages. Let's talk about the business. We work on a monthly subscription model. So far we have about 135,000 users around the globe. This is a $3.9 billion market globally. Well, how are you calculating your, your market size to get the $3.9 billion global? Uh, this is divided into three segments. We are targeting the small and the medium segment. This way we are able to get about 500 to 800 users every day. Internally to these organizations, there are lots of technology, um, different kinds of uh, systems that are built, and they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars. Can you avoid becoming very service oriented? Because even if, even if the back end, even if the workflows are very sophisticated, doing a, a sales bot for Victoria's Secret versus ICIC Bank, you have very different... I think India apparently today has the largest cluster of AI startups after US and UK. Hi, I have with me Matt Roberts, who's partner, Scale Up, and Jay Cassidy, associate with Relay Ventures. Now, both of you saw the next big idea contest winners pitch in front of you. Uh, what do you have to say about their ventures, and who's impressed you the most? I think this year was a strong crop. I think Sensforth uh, was probably, you know, the company that sort of uh, hit me the most. Yeah. Uh, what they were able to do and what they've been able to do with the team in India. What kind of companies does Scale Up really look at investing in? So Scale Up's actually a very new fund. Uh, we're primarily focused in on enterprise SaaS um, okay. and fintech investments, but we've also had to, um, done some investments in marketplaces as well. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Jake? Yeah, Relay just closed uh, our third mobile focus fund. It's a $150 million U.S. fund. Uh, when we say mobile focus, we really mean anything from the sensor to the cloud. So we're looking at, at how mobile is really disrupting healthcare, education, fintech, commerce, and looking at opportunistic categories like robotics and VR as well. How does 2017 look like in terms of investment? Um, I think it's actually going to uh, continue to be the same that we've seen for the past six to eight months. I don't think we're going to see any broad changes. I, I, you know, I think um, you know, with the changes in the U.S., it sort of dominates things, and, and our friends in China as well, and in India, um, are going to be uh, dealing with sort of the fallouts of lots of spending over the past few years. But I don't think we're going to see any major changes for at least another year or two. Yeah, so I think from a, from an early stage funding perspective, I think that you know great companies and great founders are going to continue to uh, you know find good capital. I do think that we may see, and I hope we do see a little bit of a sentiment swing on the public market side. I think that you know with Snapchat 
positioning to uh, to go for their IPO, and I think a lot of other you know companies in that ten billion dollar valuation range, the Dropbox, the Pinterest of the world. I, I hope that uh, we see a little bit of a swing towards you know stronger exit market as well. Our startups surely impress the VCs here. On that note, it's time for a short break, but when we return, we bring you an insider's view of the startup scene in Toronto.